than what you got right now. When you look at his message, it was always a message of hope. It was always something that indicated that God has something better for you. And if you want to get what God has, you got to be willing to give up any and everything that's standing between you and God. Not only did Jesus talk about the gospel of the kingdom, but he talked about what it was to have real life. Look at John chapter 6. John chapter 6 and verse number 63. Notice here that Jesus' message included the keys to life. In John chapter 6 and verse number 63, the Bible says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. If a man just follow what Jesus said, he could find himself having that life that is fulfilling within itself. Notice also in verse number 66 that the Bible says from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will ye also go away? Then that's when Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Jesus just didn't promise you a good time down here. No man in no side. He promised you something beyond here. He promised you something that was going to be better than what you have right here. Everything that we have down here is only temporary. Yeah. But what Jesus has to offer is something that will last throughout eternity. He has something that's going to never end. Something that you won't have to worry about fading away. That's what real life is all about. Everything in this life is going to come to an end or it's going to die out. Yeah. But if you get what Jesus is offering, you've got something that's going to last forever. Yeah. And so his message included life. But not only did his message include life, but his message also included judgment. I mean, if you're going to talk about eternal life, then you have to give the alternative to people who decided they don't want it. Now look at John chapter 12 and beginning in verse number 47. John chapter 12 and beginning in verse number 47, Jesus says, if any man hear my words and believe not, you know, we got a lot of them running right around and up and through here today. We got a bunch of folk who don't want to believe what Jesus said. Folk are coming to all kind of crazy conclusions. Yeah. And hell is just a figment of our imagination. But hell is mentioned in the Bible. God teaches us about a place that he has prepared for the devil and his angels. I just believe that there is a place that God has reserved for the one who was with him in heaven and then decided to try to dethrone him. I believe that God has a horrible place for somebody who enjoyed what we're trying to get to and then not have sense enough to appreciate it. Oh, my brother and sister, if the devil is real, I know that hell got to be real because that's going to be his final end. And so Jesus, Jesus says, now, if you hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. He said, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Oh, when John was out there on the Isle of Patmos, yes. he saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And he saw that the books were open and that the dead were judged out of those things that were written in the books. And so Jesus said that I've already given you the standard of judgment. These words that I speak are going to be the same thing that's going to judge you in the last day. Oh, when we look at the message of Christ, we see that truly he is the son of God. He talked about the gospel of the kingdom. He talked about life and he talked about judgment. Not only do we look at his mission, not only do we look at his message, but we also look at his miracles. Yeah. What do 
the miracles of Jesus tell us? Well, first of all, that he's from God. In John chapter 3, and beginning at verse number 1, when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, the Bible tells us that there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man do thee, can do these miracles except that thou do this, except God be with him. And so we see from the miracles of Jesus that he is from God. Yeah. But not only that, we also see from the miracles that he is of God. Look at John chapter 9 and beginning at verse number 30. In John chapter 9 and beginning at verse number 30, the blind man answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he couldn't do what he does. Even the blind man. Had sense enough to understand that since the world has begun, you can go all the way back to Adam and bring it back to my time. He said, and ain't nobody been able to open the eyes of a blind man. This man got to be of God because if he wasn't, he would have the power that he has. Not only do these miracles show us that he's from God, not only do these miracles show us that he's of God, but these miracles show us that he's the son of God. Right. Oh yes, in John chapter 20 and beginning at verse number 30. In John chapter 20 and beginning at verse number 30. John said and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But John said that these are written that she might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life to his name. These miracles that, that Jesus did, that John recorded, Amen. John said, I recorded enough in here so that you will know that Jesus is without a doubt the Son of God, and that when you believe that, you can have life in his name. Many people speculate that Jesus is not the Son of God. You've got those who say that he's just a good prophet. You've got those who say that he was just a good benevolent man. You've got those who say that maybe he was John the Baptist reincarnated. Maybe he was Elijah returning to this earth. Maybe he was Jeremiah yeah. or just one of the good prophets. But that's why Peter had to straighten up all that speculation and let them know that God has revealed to me who he really is. Yeah. And God showed Peter that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And the Apostle John said anybody who would deny the fact that Jesus is the Son of God is not only a false prophet, but he is an antichrist. John says in 2 John 7, John says, For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus is come in the flesh. John said, This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Therefore, in verse 9, John encourages the children of God to not fool with anybody who doesn't recognize that Jesus is who the Bible says that he is. Therefore, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, John said that he don't have God. But if he abides in the doctrine of Christ, he had both the Father and the Son. John said, if anybody come unto you and bring not this doctrine, don't even